mess up. Um, but on behalf of the Lake George Arts Project, I want to acknowledge that our programs and events, um, either in the Old County Courthouse building or in Shepherd Park, um, that take place on the ancestral homeland of several indigenous peoples, um, the Mohawk, Mohicans, and others. And in recognition and respect for this history, we're committed to dismantling the ongoing legacies of colonialism and, and are supporting and empowering and partnering with indigenous artists and communities. And this is also a work in progress and your feedback is welcome. Um, so um, I would like to introduce Susie Brandt and we know we have some participants of the MICA quilt group here. So Susie's gonna talk for about 20 minutes or so, but this is, can all flow however you want, Susie. Sure. Um, and then we can do like a, a Q and A after that and all join in as a group, just like the, uh, and everybody can be unmuted, <laughs> just like you guys used to do when you met on Zoom. And I'm gonna let you um, uh, introduce the whole project, but I just wanna let people know that the gallery is open uh, Wednesday through Friday, 12, to five and Saturdays, 12 to four. We're gonna have a closing reception on October 29th from four to 6 p.m. in the gallery. And also I wanna say, if you're coming this Saturday to the gallery, it's Oktoberfest in Lake George. So I would get off on the Northern exit in Lake George, exit 22, um, just so you can avoid some of that traffic. Our street won't be blocked, but it might be a little crazy in town, so. So, oh, and well, Susie, you're going to talk about the raffle quilt, the, I mean, the Ukrainian house top quilt, right? Sure. Okay, so then I'm going to just let you take it away now. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Laura Von Ross, great painter and gallery director at the Lake George Arts Project. Thanks for having me. And thanks for coming to this thing. There <laughs> are, um, there are a lot of people on the Zoom who, um, I'm already noticing, but uh, who have participated in this project. And um, if, feel free to unmute yourselves and chime in at any time. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things. I, I've, I've prepared one of those slideshows that I often prepare. And I'm gonna, but I'm gonna talk, in this one, I'm gonna talk a little tiny speck about the history, my history with the Lake George Arts Project um, because, it is, uh, it is long. And uh, so it's really thrilling to be here. And let me do a little screen share thing. And uh, thanks for, for coming over. And um, so we've done, we did this for two years. We, we did, we, uh, we, we worked together on Zoom for two years. But before, I'm going to talk about something else before that, which is, oops, which is, I can't make my my thing go, um, uh, which is the uh, that uh, that in in 1991, my sister Betsy Brandt and I uh, did a project, did something at the Lake George Arts Project, and um, this was the exhibition announcement. I I had to get out my cell phone and do the math. It was 31 years ago. And this was the this was the cover of the exhibition announcement. We we lifted it off of something or other. Um, but uh, the title of the show was actually um, True to Life. And in, when you went to the Lake George Arts Project at that time, you looked, you walked in the front door and you looked right into the, the fireplace. It wasn't boarded up like it is now. And um, we were very inspired by that. At that time, I was recently out of graduate school and Betsy was in graduate school. And she flew in I was living in Corinth, New York, and Betsy came in from grad school, and in two weeks, we transformed Corinth. the gallery into a house. And um, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but it was a thing. We painted all the walls, we brought in all the furniture, we made all this stuff. It was a scene, and uh, and we were young, and um, and we were trying to make a house that we were thinking of the house as, a, as an extension of um of our identities and our being. And we wanted to make the house where the most creative people ever lived. Um, but part of it also was a bedroom. And um, and there's a quilt on the quilt on the bed is made with clothing labels. A yes. lot of these things we had made ahead of time or we, some of the things we made right on site. And then I, I had, and I, so I had made that quilt and actually the headboard of the bed was frosted. Um, and the um, and there's the quilt up on the wall behind the bed, and I had made that. So those that that whole quilt thing goes way back, and um, 
And uh, yeah, so we made this installation. It's a whole talk. I could I could do it for hours for you. But now we are here we are in 2022 and we've been having a pandemic. And um, and so I made uh, and so I'm going to talk about the show. Um, um, and it's really great to bring it to the arts project. We've been making I, so I teach at the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore and I teach in the fiber department. And um, and it's a really fun place to it's been a fun place to work. There's great students. And um, at one point, I decided we would have an ex, sort of extracurricular group and we would make quilts and raffle them off. And this is like in 2015. And it was like a one day a week thing after school. Um, uh, we uh, and so this is the, yeah this is the picture of the raffle poster of the raffle here's students working on raffle quilts students who won the quilts um, and I did it and I did it the first year to and I thought as long as we get a thousand dollars we'll I'll do it again and we did and this is where I uh, this is where we work this is the this building at Maryland Institute College of Art is uh, the former BNO railroad station building. And uh, the fiber department is the second floor of this building. It's cool. And we've even had students make a quilt based on the building. Like I said, MICA students are pretty amazing. Um, and then one year, a couple of years into it, uh, our friend, um, the artist Joyce Scott in um, Baltimore introduced us to um, Glenda Richardson, who's on this call, and Roz Robinson from, um, the African-American quilters of Baltimore. And they came to see us at MICA and we were like, hey, guess what? We're already, you know, we'd love to have you come in and you know, what are you, blah, blah, blah. So they did. We had a sew-in one Saturday and all these people who really knew a lot more than I did about quilt making came and sewed with our students. And they continue to come. They continue to this day to come to in and um and work with students and you know what's fun what's funny about school is that our students change you know like students go through they graduate and you know new ones come in and so the ch students it's change over but these people keep coming in it's pretty great so um here we are and i'm looking and also uh here we are putting together you know arranging quilt squares and these two students on the right i'm going to talk about more this is them in their first year lowell zelenka and ray Drotliff, and they found us through um our colleague valeska popolo so we we're lucky to have them and um and, but then we had the pandemic you know how that happened and uh like we literally said bye one one week and uh we were shut down the next day and we didn't see each other again for two years more than two years it felt like um so and i went i ended up going to lake luzerne new york uh where i keep a summer studio and um and it's also near my mother and i uh uh i had to learn how to teach overnight on online and i was in my studio and i was also teaching out of my studio for the first time so there were these quilt squares in that studio and they were handmade. And I thought, oh my God, you could teach people how to hand stitch on Zoom, blah, blah, blah. And so I figured it out. So I'd make these little step-by-step -step tutorials. And I had taught and I taught the students at that semester. And it worked out. And it was the pandemic. And who knew what was going on? But we got through the semester and students learned. And it was amazing. And it was May. And I didn't know what to do. And I missed everybody and it felt like things were falling apart. So I got in touch with that guy, Lowell, in front of the quilt, Lowell Zelenka. And I said, Lowell, do you think we could do this on Zoom? And he was game. He was the, he was the in, in charge of the quilt club. Um, and he was a junior at the time. And so he put together our uh, a Google Doc and we sent it out to people and said, what do you need? And we'll send you anything you want. And Joe Biden sent me some stimulus money and I had so I thought I'll I'll send anybody a self-addressed stamped envelope and and people responded look at 44 responses there um and I made a little website so that we could learn from each other and people did it I was it was amazing I got over to the Lake Luzerne post office and I get my little envelopes full of amazing quilt squares and it was like just to physically have those 
objects was so amazing. Putting them all together was amazing. We made these log cabin quilts. I was over at my mother's putting this out on the deck, putting, tying it together. And we did it. And we made this one for the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. And I found, and all these people worked on it. Amazing. It was, and it was Good, people yeah. started inviting people. I'm good. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like you have company. And no. so, and and then we and we raffled it off um, uh, through uh, Carrie Litz at the store. And the, we are running a raffle now, and you can still do it through the Micah store. You can still buy tickets through the Micah store for the most recent raffle. We did it again for the Black Yield Institute, and this is in the summer of 2020. And um, we ran a, and all kinds of people helped us. We made a crazy quilt. Um, we raffled it off for um, the Black Yield Institute in Baltimore. Um, they work on food security issues in the city. Um, and we usually would have raffled them off for students, but this summer we decided to raffle them off for other causes. But in this case, we only raised 1200 bucks and we're like, that's not enough, um, but we kept going. And we made another one. So here's me like figuring out the tutorials and lining up all the stuff and mailing it out. And we did one based on these are one, these are the squares that came in from Ursula Popolo, who's been in our group, who's a Micah grad and has been in our group for a while. And um, it was this one was about what came into view for people in 2020. Um, and we got a lot of res interesting responses. And I also was like teaching a new technique, like, oh, here's one called, you know, like applique. And we got a, we got these wonderful story quilt squares. And these, these so those first two quilts got raffled off. And then from then on, we kind of stopped because we weren't getting enough money. And also, once we made these, these quilt squares, these are the ones that are in the show at MICA. Um, Dr. Leslie King Hammond was in our group and said, these are too good. These are too much about exactly what's going on right now. We can't just let them go, which is why we're having a show at the Arts Project. Um, so they'll be raffled eventually, but uh, at this point, we we just want to share them. So lots of people worked on these. These are big lists of the participants and pictures of the labels on the back. We did some more about hope and gratitude in the winter of 2021. And these are, and this was like a reverse applique quilt. I had to learn it so I could teach it. And actually the reverse applique came from somebody did it in the, the other quilt and I was like, and we thought it was cool and we thought we'll do it. So, you know, more, more, this was a, the, this one's at the arts project right now. It's a small one. I went out on Facebook marketplace and went to Utica, New York to some stranger's house and bought this quilting machine. I didn't know how it worked, but I got it and I figured it out. And, um, and cause I wanted to do that. And we would on these zoom calls every week, we would talk, we would talk about our own work. People would, um, you know, do presentations of their work, even if they weren't quilters, it didn't matter. Everybody, there was all kinds of, there's been all kinds of people in this group. And then we got, you know, we kind of like, did, we kind of went through everybody and then if we got a new person we'd think oh my gosh we got a new person to give their talk and then we talk about things we found in the thrift store and then we talk about things that we had rescued and people shared their skills and um and 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 made their own demos to to share and i broke my arm on the ice and we were getting um and we were getting uh, like we started to get vaccines and I made this we were making this quilt this one quilt all with um, um, English paper piecing this one's at the arts project. Um, all hand stitched it was great therapy at the time all these people worked on it amazing and we made one like about about, about what do students need what do art students need and this is. Um, also kind of like the swag bag. Um, and people would send in their squares and we would, you know, put them together. Uh, and and then we and then we and then we ended up going back to school. It, but when we went back to school, the no one could go except the students and the faculty and the staff. So our outside cadre of people couldn't come in anymore. And that was a problem. So we stayed on Zoom. Um, we also were lucky um, our provost gave us the uh, ability to make these posters at the, we have a, 
at MICA, we have a, the ability to print posters because we got the whole shop from Globe Poster, we used to make rock and roll posters in Baltimore. And so, um, and, it's, and, and, a, and a former student did the background with just the letter I's and letterpress. And, and so we had kind of simultaneous things going on. We had students in person working and we had student and we were working, um, so we're working at school and we were working on Zoom and finishing some quilts for, we did some about the endangered planet. This was another project and this one sort of bridges. We were, but some people on Zoom made this one, some people in person worked on this one. So we're back with students, but we were still, you know, isolated. And then we knew we might be showing these at the Reginald Lewis Museum in Baltimore, which is the, um, Museum for African American um, History and Culture in Maryland. And um, so with their color scheme, we made a string quilt, lots of people. Um, this, these are also at um, the Arts Project. We made one from stories, for a story quilt for the Reginald Lewis Museum based on st stories um, or people's, or, or things from the collection. Um, again, lots of people worked on it. And then there was the Kindred Project. This one came from Dr. Leslie, who was uh, Dr. Leslie King Hammond, who was a consultant on this film that was being made, a Disney adaptation of Octavia Butler's Kindred. And they needed a bunch of prop quilts and a lot of other prop materials. And in two weeks, the amazing Sarah Barnes and Dr. Leslie King Hammond at school worked on those and made them. It was incredible. And then we were also making this Kawandi quilt. This one's up at the Arts Project. This is, um, it was so big, I couldn't put it on the wall. These are all hand-stitched blocks and it's all based on a, a talk that Dr. Lowry, Dr. Lowry Sims gave to the group. And we, that's the other side of it. Oh wait, here's my feet and here's the other side of it. And then here's the people who worked on it. Um, I haven't figured out how to make, how to sign this one yet, but it's in the show. And then school was over last year. And after school was over, after all the exhibitions were over, the galleries were empty and we were allowed, we thought we we're gonna just do this for one night, but we were allowed to put up all the quilts. And they had been rolled up in my house for months and I'd never seen them all out. And, um, and we, put them, we put up 14 of them one night. Sarah Barnes made amazing um, appetizers and we met each other in real life. There are many people, I had never seen them with arms and legs. Um, so, uh, uh, so then, um, so the show's going on the road and now it's, a, it's a, this is us installing Ray Drotliff who was in that little, I said, oh, these people are gonna be um, functioning later in the show. So Ray showed up, Ray's up in the North country right now. And Ray showed up when we were um, putting up the show. Um, and they're uh, putting up the, uh, the, uh, all these bits and pieces from mailings that I got. And the show looks so great. It looks really wonderful in the arts project right now. The, the sort of lowish ceilings, you can see I had to fold over this one. And, um, but uh, it's, it, it's really great. And it covers up the fireplace that we loved so much before back in 1991, Betsy and I did a show together there. Um, but you can start to see in this context kind of the scale of these things. And, um, and then this one is, is up behind me and it's fake up behind me because it's really at the arts project and, um, and we're raffling it for the Adirondack Welcome Circle and they're settling Ukrainian refugees. You can buy tickets at the MICA store site. And the link is on the um, website uh, on the Lake George Arts Project website. And this is us last week. It goes on. This is in real life. We're back together in real life working um, at school. And this one was designed by Maya, who, you know, Lowell's graduated, but Maya is now in charge of the, 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 the students. And, um, and she's a junior. And uh, this is the orange crush quilt that we're working on currently. And um, looking forward to showing them at um, Praxis Gallery in Cleveland and at Reginald Lewis. And thank you. And now I'm going to stop and, and everybody can answer the questions because there's lots of people who know all about this project. So unmute yourselves and ask questions.
Wonderful. Thank you. Nice. Um, thank you so much, Susie. I am amazed once again that you were able to get all that information in in like 20 minutes. That was great. Um, thanks for showing all those images. And it's just, it's just amazing. So um, I don't know, do you want to have people wave their hand through the little icon or would you like people just to talk or because I know people have lots of questions for you. Well, um, I don't know. How do we want to do this? We're just we're just big talkers just in improv. this group. Unmute yourselves and ask, or you can put them in the chat too if you want. If you feel more comfortable typing things in the chat, um, that's fine with me. Hey, Julie, Julie Courtney has a question. All right. How can how can I participate? <laughs> you know, I asked you this a long time ago. Can I? And you didn't answer me even. <laughs> no, I'm not very handy. But I'd love to get into it now. Is it possible? Do you do this online or do you have your tutorials, as you said, or are they available? Please. Um, well, you know, what's happening is. Uh, Again, you're not answering me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's happening is I have, I have, I, I am, I am present. Well, I'm not present this week because of this talk, but I'm present for the in-person ones. But I'm not doing the online ones. But they can, they, they're still going on. Um, and I think are they available I'm, on your website or on your Instagram or your ephemera <laughs> Ethernet or whatever it is. Well, uh, Sarah Barnes is running it, so I'll let her. I'll put her in touch with you. Okay, thank you. I'm writing it down. Look at. Thank you, Susie. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, as I understand it, Susie, it's kind of. I mean, the um, out of the eleven quilts that are in the gallery, they were all made in the last two, two and a half years. Correct. Yeah, we. Those are the. So the the scope of the project is what happened in the pandemic, like the ones that we were doing when it was all Zoom before people could come back to school again. Right. And, uh, and that's like, the, the people can come back to school as of last week, which that sort of, I mean, as of last May, but that does exclude the people who are far away because we have people who are from all over the country. So right. yeah, um, but you know, this was sort of extracurricular and I can't do everything. That's right, you can't. I mean, so it is, I mean, during that time, um, I mean, now you're all back in person, so maybe you're just going to find your way about how to how to do this with people working remotely. But what I found amazing is that you, this group, you had, I don't know how many people you started with, but it ended up being as a total of 76 or 78 people participated in all of these quilts. Yeah, That's 76, huge. Yeah, 76 people. Mm -hmm. I didn't it, even know I knew that many people, and I didn't because people knew people. <laughs> ages 10 to like 80 like that was the age group like people would say can yeah. my grandmother come can my sister come can my brother come whatever so yeah. you in, you with welcome arms you like let all these people come into your your zoom land and and mail you quilts so you would yeah. get these quilts in the mail and <laughs> yeah it was great you know because what else are you going to do in the pandemic you get, I could stay home and feel sorry for myself, but, or I could go to the post office and see what was there. And it was I, great. I mean, I'm looking at Miss Rodette on the screen right here. I, we didn't know each other before this. Yeah, it's interesting that you said a lot of the, some of the people you had never met before. Yeah. You never saw their arms or legs or. No, whatever. I'd never met them in real life. There are many people in this group who I'd met, never met in real life. And until that night when we, the night that we had them all up at Micah, people came, like Nina Bova came down from New York. You know, she's a costume designer in New York and she came down. You know, it was amazing. It was amazing. And there are still people I haven't met because Sharon's still, you know, out in, uh, in Wisconsin. And, you know, like I, you know, we haven't, we haven't all met yet. Anybody uh, else want to wave their hand or, you know, I can't, there's three screens here. That's how many, we have a lot of people. I, it's Olitha. Oh, hi, hi Olitha. Hi, Susie. How are you, hon? Good. This woman is totally amazing to me. All right. And all I can say is that she was the glue that began to keep us all together and inspired <laughs> to do the work, to create those little squares that were what, 12 inches by 12 inches. And I can admit, I'm not a quilter. 
And I felt as if it was the most welcoming way to create community. It was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Susie. I, I wanted to be on here to thank you. Oh, I'm honored. <laughs> and you know what? You know, like I'm a little starstruck, Aletha. So we have that. Don't be. <laughs> so there's a lot of activity in the chat room. I've neglected to look at the chat room. So um, if anybody's waving their hand, you might have to unmute yourself to make me yeah. aware. And I'm going to take a look at the chat room. But um, yeah, I'm all for people just talking. <clears throat> there were, um, there's lots of I mean you can all see the chat room I'm just looking to see lots of wonderful comments I just want to see if there's a oh, question I'm, I'm, I'm reading Nancy Howland's thank you Nancy <laughs> hi Susie <laughs> nice just lots of good Barbara Todd has a question so Susie were you doing all your teaching and this? Or did you have your students working exactly. on this project? Oh, no. Like the whole, on Lake Luzerne, I was teaching students in Korea. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so during the, you know, during, the, we had a year of lockdown and we were, and I was in Lake Luzerne and I, uh, and my mother was living across the river then. And, you know, it was, uh, um, and, I, and we were, I was, you know, like I, sh I shut myself off from the world so that I could be with her. You know, it was like, we were all afraid of getting, you know, getting COVID. And I but was weren't you teaching, weren't you teaching your regular students remotely? Oh yeah. But you know, I have a lot of it. That was separate. <laughs> yeah. I was teaching my regular students remotely and doing this. And all yeah, right. I mean, all I didn't right. even tell you all the other stuff going on, but yeah, there was other stuff going on. And it was fun. I mean, I thought what was amazing to me about the teaching online is that it really, there are parts of it that actually really worked well. And, um, and we just exploited it. I, I believe Tambra. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Barbara, for asking. Uh, Tambra has uh, had her hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, so I, I found um, this, the opportunity to visit right here via Facebook. So I'm glad to be in the midst. I don't belong to your group, but, mm -hmm. um, but I belong to another group. And I just want to say that we visited the uh, exhibit when it was on its last day at MICA and we were blown away. Um, we spent two hours just being basking in the beauty of all of the quilts, the colors, um, just everything. It was wonderful. Um, and I think the security lady must come back twice to make sure we were okay um, <laughs> because we stayed that long. Um, I mean, you can't zoom through uh, a quilt exhibit and, and not, and walk away appreciating anything. So um, it, was literally two hours. Um, and I was just in awe of what was there. So I thank you. Um, I think um, that was an extended um, stay at MICA. So we got to see it on the last day. And I'm so grateful that I stumbled upon that on Facebook. Um, and so glad that other people are going to have an opportunity to see it because it's now traveling. But I just wanted to say to all of you that participated, Thank you, and thank you for passing it to the passing it forward to the next generation. Um, young people need to know how to do this artwork, and I pray that the artwork never dies. I'm the only one in my family that quilts, and I've been trying to encourage other people in the family, but you know, um, maybe it'll come one of these days. But just want to say thank you, thank you so much, and I'm appreciating the discussion. So. Thank you for hearing me. Thanks. Thanks, Thank Tambra. You. And you know, you can come by and work with us on Wednesday nights at MICA. Oh. You know, people are so we're we're now again, of course, welcoming people back in tonight. And I was just get and we can get you a parking pass <laughs> at esperanta at mica.edu. So they don't I, have to I will do that. Yes, and, I'm serious. I, yeah, no. We'd love I to see you. That. We'd love to meet you. We meet 
from um, four to six on Wednesday nights. Thank you. I'm writing that down. That's great. So you don't have to be faculty or or a student, a staff, student or staff or faculty of MICA. No. That's great. That's amazing. I wanted to build on what uh, Tamper was just saying about, you know, sort of passing along quilting traditions. You know, I came from a, a mom who was a very traditional quilter. If there weren't right angles, if it didn't meet exactly right, you know, it wasn't good enough. And I remember actually coming to that community um, so in 2015 and just like thinking, oh, yeah, this is going to be great. And I was just completely overwhelmed and wowed because everything was, you know, really expert quilters. And I stepped back thinking, nah, I'm never going to quilt, you know, can't do this, you know, I'm not organized and neat enough. And then Susie, you know, when the opportunity to join in as a relatively new member of the group, you know, with the Kwanzaa quilt, um, I was just blown away by just the creativity and the flexibility and the the mm -hmm. um, just the hand stitching, you know, anything goes, anything's fine. Um, such a supportive group and um, just so encouraging of so many different ways to put fabric together. So I'm just really pleased to have been able to be a part and I'm still enjoying stitching. My orange crush is almost done. So <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> I can't do that. Thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to say, Susie, thank you too. Um, for being for letting us come to your court group, me and my mom. Um, she was the one in the pandemic, also a person who didn't do Zoom until she joined the court group. And then it was like, oh my goodness, I got to be on my court group on Zoom on, on um, Tuesday night from six to seven. I have to be there. I have to see everybody. And it was just like a family, you know, <laughs> and we just look forward to looking at everybody's creativity. And it was just awesome. I mean, you know, what people came up with, you know, on different things and stuff. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I really, really enjoyed when we all finally met together at the um, little, you know, exhibition that we had, um, it was in May or whatever, but it was really nice and it was like fun. It was really fun. And the good thing about it is like, it's no right or wrong, you know, is your creativity, how you saw it, you know, and everybody comes at the quote at a different angle. Although we have a central thing like the, the yellow and orange, the one that we're doing in the log cabin, we're doing now, but it seems to all pull together and it's amazing. It is really amazing. Yeah, thanks, Ms. Rodette. Thanks, Rodette. That's great. I see, um, it looks like Sam Bowser has his hand raised. So I think yeah. you have to unmute yourself. There you go. I'm unmuted <clears throat> and, I, and I'm un unbelievably impressed by, um, <laughs> I, wish, I wish somebody in, would invent a time machine so I can go back to that living room that you had uh, at the arts project. I, I could just snuggle in that bed for quite some time. Anyway, that's, so look, I'm a geek. I'm not an artist, I'm a science dude. And um, what, what separates art from science is that science is now totally collaboration. You have to, you can't sit in a, in a corner of a room and do science anymore. That went out in the, you know, the last century. But art, in fact, I'm married to an artist who locks herself in her studio and she does her artwork. And um, this illustrates the work that you do in the quilting community and the, and the quilters um, ethos, I suppose, is interesting to me in that um, it, it really does give you a sense of how people can collaborate to do wonderful things. So my question for you is, and, and it might be too geeky for you, I don't know. Um, do you have any insight on how to make art more collaborative and less individualized? Um, I get, I'll leave that. I'll, I'll just leave that as a question. Thanks. 
well, I, you know, I welcome anybody else in the group wants to give an answer to that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I also work alone. I, I work, I work on solo projects too. And I've almost, and I've worked with, I worked with my sister for years, but I've worked with many other artists on projects. So, you know, it just kind of depends I mean, you know, but I'll make things all by myself with nobody else egging me on. Um, but it is, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I, I don't even know why I do this, but it's just because it's fun and people came, went along with it and it was like amazing. Um, yeah, there is a so part of, isn't there a part of this that's greater than the sum of its parts, you know, that, that was kind of amazing. I think so, Marla had her hand. Um, yeah, Marla, yeah. would you like to respond to that? Yeah, hi, hi, Sam. <laughs> hi, Marla. I would say that actually, there are lots of artists who work really collaboratively and we interact with their work all the time. But we have this idea of like the fine artist, the gallery artist who only shows the individual work of their labors, but even that might be a little bit of a fallacy. Um, every time you watch a movie or a TV show, you're seeing the work of many, many dedicated creative professionals who are working, whether that's writers in the writer's room who are working collaboratively or people on set who are working collaboratively Every piece of theater that's ever been made is a bunch of artists who are working collaboratively. And even big name artists like people like Nick Cave, they have teams of people who work with them and under them to make uh, their events happen and to actually assist with the work. So I think it's a little bit of like a, an old idea that, that there's a singular artist who's a great genius who makes work alone. If you look back through history, artists have workshops and they have apprentices who work under them. And so there really is, is are a lot of people I think who don't necessarily are, get credit a lot of times for working collaboratively in the arts, but it really often takes a large team to make things happen, especially the things that we interactive, interact with on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Thanks, Marla. I'd like to add something to that, I, that, that actually quilting historically has been collaborative. Mm. That if you, you know, the whole idea of a quilting bee where the women usually would get together, they would either quilt somebody's individual work or they would get together to make a quilt for a wedding or a new baby. So it really is a collaborative thing. And, and the other thing is that, you know, yes, science is, not siloed at all at this point. But where do scientists get together? Well, they have meetings, they have conferences, they have places where they share their research. They have um, journals that they publish their research in and they share those you know, to anybody who's interested and look for feedback. So for art, you know, you, Susie has created that forum um, for people to come and and share their techniques to see and respond to whatever other people are doing, which is exactly the way science works. Yeah, yeah Terry, uh, thanks for that. Um, that. I guess that's the that's the point I was trying to make. I think um, maybe this type of um, endeavor, and and very much like what Marla said, um, certainly uh, orchestras are collaborative. Uh, ventures clearly and and movies and so forth so there's that category of artwork that is actually dependent on collaboration but um, then again there's still this um, this idea that if you tell a, an artist um, you know the, the feedback to the individual artists or painter or whatever there's pushback against that and I, I and and irrespective of that, I really appreciate um, the community that uh, Susie has uh, put together. And, um, and I really do envy all of the efforts and all of the output that, uh, or product that comes out of it. So thank you very much, all of you. And now I'll mute. Okay. Thank, so, thanks, uh, and I, I, I also wanted to note that Terry, Terry's calling in from Minnesota. <laughs> oh, great from all over the country yeah so I thought I mean that was an interesting um 
topic that that Sam brought up, and I hope you don't mind, Susie, if I mention um, how this whole thing, like you were actually going to have a solo show at the Lake George Arts Project originally planned, um, but uh, it, it, Susie is an amazing artist and actually a very prolific artist, um, but she decided to to sacrifice her solo show opportunity to put this up because she was so excited about that. And it was happening now and um, it was very timely for the time, September, 2022. And um, I, I really appreciate your doing that. I think that was very generous of you to do that. Um, so thank you. Yeah, well, you know, there's, there's always more work to be made. And, uh, and I'll have lot, you know, I've had lots of shows and I'll probably have lots more. So it just seemed like the right timing. And I didn't want to stress about the other show right now anyway. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. oh, we'll just do this. And I was actually, and I was kind of also wrapping up this project saying, here it is. It's, you know, once we could go back and be together again, I said, this is, you know, a nice neat two-year package, a nice neat 14 quilts. And yeah. um yeah. Um, but it was it was uh, yeah, it was it was it, it was time for it to to end and um and uh and it was and it would not, and I wanted to share it I also really wanted to do it up there because I was there the whole time but it you know it was it felt so un you know like untethered and we were all over the place but you know that walk into the Lake Luzerne post office every day it was a big part of it and um so it just felt like it was it was like oh I'll show people up, you know in the north what I was doing yeah, very intense, especially the first year was very intense for everybody. I mean, it was, oh, it, it still is, it's still going on. Um, but, but I think, you know, it is timely and having the work in the gallery now is, I mean, I have to say, so we opened on what today, is it, we opened exactly a week ago, first day, boom, like lots of visitors. I mean, it's just great. Um, and people walk in there and they stay for a while. And they're quilters and people that aren't quilters and people come in and like, I learned so much about quilting from you that the um, swag bag, I've had a, two separate people say, oh yes, it's a common motif, the gift basket. Like, I don't know any, you know, it, I'm learning so much. And I love that there's all these, these squares are so unique. If you come to the gallery, take a look at that swag bag. There's a couple of tiles in there that if you didn't tell me and point it out, I wouldn't have known this, but there's one. So it's about what do art students need? That was you gave you threw off that kind of theme, right? What do art students need? So there's these gift baskets and there's one that's it's a nerve cell. It's like a nerve and it's a nerve like I wouldn't have. <laughs> you got to have nerve, right? There's another one. It's a basket of winded up like pink tubes and it says underneath. You got to have guts, you know, so there's so much humor too. Um, I just love that. They're just, they're so beautiful. And there's, you know, some of them are a little bit heavy, but some, but they're just <laughs> put together. Um, the, just the feeling of all these people, you can just feel it in the room that there's the, so many people involved in it. And the gallery is completely transformed. You can feel the energy coming from these quilts. It's very warm in there. I mean, I just want to wrap myself around. <laughs> anyway, I'm talking too much. Any, let's see, do we have any questions? Um, uh, Barbara, oh. go ahead. Uh, I have another comment that um, in, in the history of quilting, it's by no means only this, and someone else brought this up um, in a different way earlier, but. Uh, it was most common for people to work on their own quilts and then get together in a quilting bee and quilt them together. And you've kind of flipped that because Susie, you had to, mm -hmm. you had to, to assemble all these quilts. <laughs> so individuals made the pieces and then you had to put them all together. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah, well, not really, because you know what, they were hand sewing them, you know, like I set it up so it could all be hand stitched so that mm. no one felt like they had to run out and get a sewing machine, because mm. who needs that, yeah, yeah. and you can actually do yeah. a ton by hand, so mm -hmm. I said, but people did sew, you know, did, they machine stitched them also, but I set it up so that everything could be accomplished by hand, and you know, you could, you could kind of get yourself to the, you know, the CVS and get a needle and thread, it's not like a hard thing to, to get, the, to get the materials. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have good scissors though. 
Um, but anyway, I, but then, and I was just hand tying those first couple of quilts. Um, I would machine, I would put them together by machine because otherwise we would, I would still be working on one. Um, but, um, but there, well, I think that's I, a big I, I went out and got that quilting thing because I always wanted one and you can get them on Facebook marketplace for very cheap, really. And, um, and I went and got that sewing machine when we made the, 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 um, viewfinder quilts, those first picture quilts. And it was, I can't tie those. The strings will be in the way. I need to go get that. And they're actually, mm -hmm. I can quilt one of those in less than a day. Ooh. You know, like I just, I, and you know, I don't use it, you know, like I just like, so I just like do it like it's a drawing. I scribble those things. I mean, I think people who are serious quilters would might look at these things and go, oh my God, I can't believe she did it like that. E. Yeah. But but um, you know, the, so my the sewing this my the sewing machine stitching isn't all like perfect or anything, but um, but you know, they, they it's it, sewing machines make it really fast. Everybody else's are like super slow. And I think the ner thing that was nerve wracking for me was like making sure they looked right. I would worry about it, but once you know, my sister would mask up. She lived nearby the artist sister, and I I'd have her come in and say look at these what do you think and she and then she you know helped me rearrange them one of the other things that I thought was really fun was using scraps and using old clothing and remembering I mean it was it was really about recycle reuse and then and then doing a, a scrap exchange that was you know we we all collect like buckets of scraps but you kind of get tired of your own stuff every once in a while so it was great to be able to see what everybody else's scraps were like and say, oh, well here, take these of mine and let me respond to your scraps and your aesthetic um, in my own way. I just, that was really fun to me. And I'm looking forward to doing more of those. <laughs> That's great. There's lots of comments. I'm just looking to see if there's a question. Um, well, one of the questions what earlier was, um, did, you, did, you, did you need to have experience? And I think you've covered that. But I think it's great that you actually tried to make this very easy for, I mean, you were actually mailing out material <coughs> fabric to people. Um, and I guess just by conversations, um, discussed how to find material, thrift shops, or to get material from anywhere, old scraps. Yeah. Well, and also Carrie Litz at the Micah store. Once we were back at school, Carrie would, uh, you could go by the school store and pick up stuff if you're in Baltimore. And, uh, and, she, and she very kindly kept a nice big box of scraps so people could go through those and get what they needed. So we would, do, we would have supplies and stuff at the store, which was really great. I mean, um, it's, been, it's been really amazing, like the people that uh, have helped with this. And uh, yeah, once we got, once they came back to Baltimore and we were back at school, um, you know, Sarah Barnes would put things together and I didn't have to do everything. I mean, it was, it was, it was a whole lot, but then of course I was teaching completely full time again. And uh, so it was really nice. We were, were much more collaborative. Right. Sorry, Susie, I'm just scrolling quickly through, through my, my, um, my chat room here. Oh yeah, Carrie looks. She still got the. Carrie says she still got the scrap. So you know, come on over. <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, I just want to um, mention again the the um, Ukrainian house top quilt that's um, in the exhibition. Uh, Adirondack Welcome Circle is going to benefit from the raffle ticket sales. And on our website, we tried to make this easy and streamline it. And so, if you go to our website, LakeGeorgeArts.org. There's a link to purchase the raffle tickets, and it was Carrie that set that has set that up for you guys at MICA, and it's very easy. You can buy one ticket for five dollars. You can buy more. I think you get a little bit of a discount if you buy more. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, but, um, yeah, Carrie put the link up in the chat. Thank you, Carrie. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> so it's also over here too. So um, we're going to. Uh, have that winner of the raffle picked um, at the close of the show. We're going to try and coordinate that um, during our closing reception. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I think we will be sell selling tickets at the reception too. So we may not announce it until the day after. We'll, we'll see. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but you know, this tick, this quilt that's behind me could be yours. <laughs> and and all of the money goes to um, all of the money goes to uh, a, a very particular family that um, the Adirondack Welcome Circle is settling in, not in Lake George, but in Glens Falls, New York, which is the little city on the Hudson River mm -hmm. nearby. It's only 15 minutes away. It's only 15 minutes away. Okay. This is so cool. Anybody else want to make a comment? Can I just say, Susie, Susie you're brilliant. I think this is fabulous. Yeah. And I just, the idea of stitching when things are really stressful is so powerful. And the fact that you involve so many people is just great. Yeah. Thank you, Cindy. Cindy, Cindy did a, a, a weaving You're welcome. Project. And I'm jealous Cindy that you've got weaving that project. Quilting. Yeah. Well, I, I, I didn't hear what you just said, Cindy. You're jealous that she's... <laughs> Can you say that again, Cindy? Oh, when she got that quilting machine. Oh, yeah, when she got that quilting machine, I was so jealous. Yeah, well, that was just the magic of Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, geez. And, Susie and, will and, and Joe Biden's stimulus money. Mm. I did I did kind of burn through it, though. <laughs> that worked. But it was worth every penny. Yes. <laughs> yes, it enlightened a lot of hearts. <laughs> It was, it was fun. Well, we, I, you know what, this is also like, I knew, it. I, I think I, like, I, there was like the immediate circle of people who had already been part of the project, and, but lots of people invited lots of other people. And that's how I know, like Miss Brodett, like, it was amazing. So it's like, I involved 76 people, but those people, you know, it was like the immediate circle knew people who knew people and brought them in. Erica Caruth was really good at that. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and you know and it, that's what you know erica's like when erica said that um that dr leslie king hammond wanted to be part of it and dr lowry sims i was like starstruck oh wow <laughs> you know it was like it was so great i couldn't believe it and you know and it would be like that all the time and uh you know so it was just like the the, the it was everybody helped you know really lifted up everybody else in this group and that was what was so fun about it and who knew, you know, like I had no idea. I thought we we're going to do it for the summer and bam, two years go by and look at what we did. It was incredible. And, you know, I would, and I, and I, I actually were doing a little catalog and I was writing a little essay and I did reflect on the idea that there were times when I get like crazy, like, oh my God, I can't do it anymore. Oh my God, I can't do it anymore. And then I get on the Zoom meeting and I'd be like, I love these people so much. I'm just going to make it one more, just one more. <laughs> So it was like, I feel like people lifted me up and it was really great. It was, you know, like what a, what a, um, you know, like what an honor to work with everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite remarkable that, you know, most people didn't want to deal with, not, I shouldn't say that, but in, in some situations, people didn't want to go on Zoom again or teaching on Zoom was really difficult. And I just find it remarkable that your group just grew and grew and grew over the course of two years. And you've just, you've told me that just being there, you know, nobody would mute themselves. Everybody was talking at once and it was just a, you know, it was a riot. So what a great community. I mean, I feel, I feel like you feel that in the work that you've all created, you know, it's, it's a lot of voices yeah. and a lot of support. I mean, you know, everybody's hunkered down at home and this was, this was like people needed this, you know, they really needed it. Yeah, well, I know I did. So I'm glad everybody went along with me for the ride. So thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. And thanks for, and thanks for having this, Laura. Thanks for um, oh, bringing absolutely. everybody in. We've all been on our best behavior tonight for I everybody know. in the Adirondacks, you know. I just well, want you to know that we're all on our best behavior. Oh, Maya's yeah. here. Maya, the, our current... And and Lowell's on on the phone. I noticed Lowell's here. Lowell and Ma Lowell's the past president of the Micah Raffle Quilt Group, and and Maya's the present present dent of the Micah Raffle Quilt Group. Yeah. So thanks for being here. And they've been meeting tonight without me. 
Yeah. So, <laughs> what I really love. Oh, actually, exactly. I went on sabbatical for a year and the group went on without me. So this just goes on and on. It doesn't need yeah. me anymore. So wow. thank you so much. Thanks for doing this, you guys. Thanks Susie, for thank here. you. We have two minutes left. So we, we can just so I got one more. Okay, so people are thanking you and such wonderful comments that people can see in the chat room. Um, we usually don't want to go over an hour, so I'm going to have to to end the meeting soon. But um, Susie, your energy is infectious and inspiring, and I, I thank you and all of these wonderful people that you've brought together and the the work that you've made together. And come to the gallery. You you'll just want. We have a bench. You saw? Did you? See, we have an install shot, right? There's yeah. a bench, and people like to just sit, and you can just sit in the gallery as long as you want. Or you can lay down on the floor. We won't. You can go. you can even lay down on the floor. We used to do yoga classes. This would, <laughs> would have been a great show for that yoga class. Yeah. Um, so. so thank you. Thanks so much. And I'm look just at this. Double check. I love it when you stay on the we stay on the clock just the right amount. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Thanks for okay, being so, here, everyone. Right. I think we're gonna yeah. end it because um it is to, it is six. So yeah. Thank Seven. you, yeah. everybody. Yeah. This, Susie, thanks for putting the images together. Made my job a lot easier. Um, but you did such a great job um, doing that as well. Just like everything you do. You're awesome. It's an MFA. Thank you. That's what it is. <laughs> thank you, Susie. Thank we can you. all unmute. Thank and thanks, thanks Susie. for being here. I really appreciate you. it. Thank bravo, you, Susie. Thank you, Susie. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.